Right, we're just looking at OpenStack and in particular if I want a external network. I'm going to have a look at my network connections here and network topology for my demo tenant. Well, you can see I've got an internal network which is 192.168.0.0 slash 24. An external network which is 192.168.2.0 slash 24. This sort of represents your sort of home network connecting out to the internet, your Wi-Fi network out to the internet. So this is the outside, the public side, and should reflect your public network and network connectivity. So that's uh, very, very similar, but as we can see, the addresses are different. We've got a router in the middle here, which you can see both sides, and we've got a tenant over here on that. Well, we've got a machine, a VM on that tenant network, uh, the tenant being demo, of course. Now, first things first, and this sort of caught me out for a little while uh, because I was um, struggling away. And I realized after many attempts that I need to go back in as an admin in order to do some basic networking for the external side. So I can see I've got an external network which has been created. And these are the settings that I need, which I think is probably more important to know what we need. So you can see I've got an external network. Uh, the internal network, that, that's fine, that's done and done, and that's done within the actual tenant themselves. So within demo rather than within admin. So really only concentrating on the external network. We can see I've given that external network uh, an address range and a network address. Uh, we've told it to be shared. It becomes active and in admin status as well, which we can change. We can actually take that down. So if we go to edit network, we could take that down in terms of its admin status, which you don't want to do, of course. So I've named it. I've made sure it's that. I've made sure it's shared and made sure it's identified as an external network. So looking at that external network, what we can see is that what I've actually had to create is an external subnet. I didn't need to do anything with the ports, that will be done automatically. So I went into external networks and I created a subnet. If I look at the, the details of that subnet, we can see here, but if we go back and if we look at editing that subnet, we can see the field settings. So what I've done here is I've given it a name, um, I've given it a network address uh, and then I've gone in and I've given it a gateway address and then sort of disabled gateway has been unselected cleared. Uh, I, I think I've been mistakenly selecting that sort of thing you sort of your brain sort of says select it and then the subnet details here I haven't enabled DHCP um, because I've actually wanted to create a subnet a, a, a range of addresses I can use that are floating addresses. So let me just come out of there. So what I can see is I've created that network and if I go in, I can actually see that the field settings that I needed to have created were the side and network, the range of addresses. Now the way you do this, you set the range of addresses, but you actually do, you actually deselect uh, allocation via DHCP in a moment. And then we've got the gateway address of 2.1 at the end here. So that's fine. If I sign out of that, and I go back in as the actual tenant. So the tenant, obviously the, the, the cloud provider is going to go in there and provide the external network connectivity and then the, con the tenant can consume that, which is indeed what I've done as part of the topology. So I've consumed that external network. If I look at the networks that are available to me, I can't change the external network. I can view it, I can see what's there, but I can't change it which is good, which is exactly right. I mean, I can change the internal network side, so that's up for me to set. So the internal side is done, the external side has been done. So as a result of that, when I look at an individual instance, I can see that this individual instance has actually got an internal address from the internal network, and then through the addition of a floating address has got the 192.168.2.31. So that's through the association of a floating address there are none because I've used it. So if I add another one and I've select the network, which is the external network and allocate an IP, I can see I've got another address here, which I could then associate, which will be the next one in the pool. So I'm not going to associate that one because that would be the next one in the pool 30, 30 through to um, um, uh, 40, 49, I think it was, but it's in that range. So 31 first, then 32 would be the next one that should, could be uh, allocated to another instance, which will give it reachability to the outside world. If that's what I wanted to get to, that's what I got to. Now we'll uh, revisit that once again.